This video is best viewed on a full screen at 1080p quality. Click the gear at the lower right corner of the video window. Next, click the quality option. And finally, select 1080p. Okay guys, before we get started, I just want to do a quick two minute explanation of the method I'm going to use to compare projectors for you. Uh, I do not do what most people do, which is to play a movie clip and record the screen with a video camera. And the reason for this is because video cameras automatically adjust for brightness and other things to present the best image possible. Now, I don't necessarily want to present the best image. What I want to do is present the most accurate image for you. Okay, so here we have some uh, image of some colored smoke. It's being projected from our $100 off-brand budget projector. The image doesn't look too bad, and again, that's because our video camera is automatically making adjustments for brightness and other things. Um, now watch that image on the left as I uncover the brighter name brand projector on the right side. Do you see how the image on the left changes brightness depending on the brightness in the room? And that is the reason that I'm not going to videotape the projected images. Instead, I'm going to take still pictures of the projected images uh, side by side without any automated adjustments. Uh, this will give you a much more accurate representation of each projector I'm reviewing for you. I'm projecting all of the images in a dimly lit room rather than a dark room. For this, I'm using two shaded lamps placed about 12 feet diagonally from the center of the screen, and each lamp has a small 15-watt chandelier bulb in it. The ambient light in the room measures 4 lumen at the center of the screen. So the two most important factors in your home theater are obviously the projector and the screen, and that's why I want to quickly mention the type of screen I'm projecting onto. In this case, it's a spandex projector screen instead of the more typical blackout material. There are several advantages to this type of screen, uh, one of which it can attach to a $30 backdrop stand. Uh, it's easy to do. You just take some five spring clips and you attach the screen to the backdrop stand. And this can be used outdoors in your backyard or take it with you camping or to a party. And the screen I have here is made in the USA by Stretch Screen USA. It's available on Amazon for around $80, which is actually less than a do-it-yourself uh, fixed frame type screen. Uh, you don't have to buy wood, corner bracket staples, and actually build the frame as you do with that type of frame. The other advantage uh, is that you don't need a permanent empty wall space. For example, the situation I have here is a little awkward to put up a fixed frame screen because I have a staircase in the way. But with the spandex projector screen, that's not a problem. It literally only takes 30 seconds to put up this screen. Right here, we're all halfway done already. It just simply attaches to five small hooks that are uh, in the ceiling, and you can barely see them. And the corner brackets, the, their bottom corners, attach with a bungee to something as simple as a water jug or whatever you want to uh, use for that. And there you have it. The screen is completely up. Now just compare that to a pull-down screen, which are big, heavy. You typically need two people to move these things around, and you're not going to throw it in your car and take it somewhere, or even move it from room to room. Uh, with the spandex screen, look at how easy this is to take down. Not a problem. And there you go. If you have five hooks in the other room, another 30 seconds and you got it up. So here you can see the spandex projector screen produces a really good image, but that's only half the story. Check this out. If we pick up our camera and walk around behind the screen, you can see that the spandex projector screen can also act as a backlight screen. That's like getting two screens in one. No other type of projector screen can do this. Now one of the biggest advantages of uh, rear projection is that you can walk in front of the screen without blocking the projected image. This really comes in handy if you're doing like an outdoor movie with a bunch of kids because they can run around in front of the screen without ca casting shadows on the screen because the projector is actually behind the screen. Now buyer beware, you may be tempted to go with a cheaper knockoff version from China, but 
Go with the one made in the USA. It's Amazon's choice, even at a higher price, and it has 147 reviews so far, where the cheap one only has three reviews, which can easily be faked. So here's the Amazon product page of the spandex projector screen that I have, and they have images along the left. As you can see, the it's a much cleaner design instead of sewn crooked and all that, and the fabric is a much higher quality. It's a tighter weave which will give you better colors and a sharper image. And here is a real world example of that. I have the two screens hung side by side with the Made in the USA one on the left and the Chinese knockoff version on the right. And you can really see the difference in the color quality, the brightness, the saturation. And if you look at this next image here, you can actually see how much detail you lose in the smoke due to the uh, looser weave of the cheaper fabric. And in the final example here, just take a look at the stars in the sky. You can see you are almost non-existent in the cheaper fabric of the Chinese knockoff version. So get the Made in the USA screen. If you spent money on a projector, you're going to want a good screen. Here's the product page one more time, and I put a link in the description to make it easy for you. All right, let's get going. Compare our projectors. Here you can see the size comparison between the 200 lumen LaserBeam Pro C200 projector with a resolution of 1366 by 768 and the AXA M5 projector with a brightness of 900 lumen and a similar 1280 by 800 resolution. One nice thing about the laser projector is that it always remains in focus, whereas most other projectors have to be refocused each time you move them either closer to or farther away from the projector screen. Okay, let's start off by projecting a simple white image. As you can see, the AXA M5 is much brighter than the LaserBeam Pro. And we'll zoom in to compare the pixels. Here we have some simple colored squares, and as you can see, the AXA M5 has much brighter colors. And this next slide you might want to pause. This is the actual lumen measurement of each color. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room like all of our other slides were shown. And let's zoom in on this one to compare the pixels as well. Here we have a color gradient. And the AXA M5 has much brighter colors and more saturated colors as well. Here's a different color gradient. And as we can see, the LaserBeam Pro has somewhat smoother transitions between some of the colors. Here is some colored smoke on a white background. The AXA M5 red looks more detailed, but the LaserBeam Pro, uh, the greens look more detailed. Let's zoom in on this one. Here we have some colored smoke on a black background, and the LaserBeam Pro looks a little bit more natural, I would say. Uh, if we zoom in on that to compare, the M5 details look a little blown out. Here we have a nice highlight shadow grid. Uh, both projectors have good highlights and shadows. And we'll zoom in to compare the quality here. Here we'll compare the shadow details. Uh, the M5 has a little too much contrast and it squeezes the image, making the face look skinnier. Let's zoom in on this one. And here we'll look at the highlight. The M5 is brighter and smoother. The C200 is a little bit grainier. Here we'll compare the shadow details. Again, the AXA M5 has a little bit too much contrast. And when we zoom in on that, we can see the face looks harsher than the LaserBeam Pro image does. Here's a high contrast image, and this one, the LaserBeam Pro, I think the highlights look better. And here we'll test the resolution with some grid patterns. The M5 reproduces the grid more accurately, probably because it has a more standard resolution of 1280 by 800. And zooming in, we can see that here. And here's a different grid pattern. Once again, the M5... Uh, actually squeezes the image, making the circles oval shape. And we'll zoom in on this one as well. Here's some black grids on a white background. A similar grid pattern from both projectors. And if we zoom in on this one to compare. 
and now we have some white grids on a black background. Once again, similar grid patterns from each projector. No drastic differences. And we'll zoom in on this one as well. Next, we'll compare the quality of text. And both projectors produce nice legible text. And zooming in, we can compare those a little bit more closely. Here's a skin tone comparison. Uh, both projectors produce nice skin tones. Uh, the M5 a little bit brighter, and we'll zoom in on this one. And a few more faces to compare here. Uh, again, nice looking faces from both projectors. The M5 squeezes the image again, making the faces look thinner for some reason. Here we'll do a simple color comparison. The M5 has a little bit too much contrast in some of the areas here. And let's zoom in and compare that. Here's a similar color comparison. And again, the M5 has a little bit too much contrast in some of the areas. Here's a nice uh, lake scene with some fog, and in this one, the higher contrast of the M5 uh, seems to make the image look a bit better. Here we'll compare colors. Uh, nice image from both projectors. The M5 again squeezes the image. You can notice the shorter beak here. And here's a good nighttime scene. Uh, you can see both projectors have good shadow details. And we can zoom in on this one to get a closer look. Here's a nice high contrast image. Uh, the XM5 is much brighter with a bit more color saturation. And here we'll compare the contrast. The M5 is brighter, so of course it has better contrast. And let's zoom in to compare the details. Here's a nice dimly lit scene. Uh, the M5 is brighter with more contrast, as we can see in the brick area. And let's zoom in to compare the details of the pyramid. Here's a good sunset scene. Uh, the M5, the colors are more saturated. That's quite noticeable. And here's a night scene of a bridge. The M5 seems to brighten the image a little bit too much, making the sky appear blue. And let's zoom in to compare the bolts on the bridge for the detail comparison. Here's another nice night shot. Uh, the M5 has a little bit too much contrast. It just doesn't look natural. And let's zoom in to compare the details of the fence here. Here, the, both projectors produce a decent image with uh, different shades of green. And zooming in, we really notice the different greens here. Here's a balloon in a dark sky. Uh, the M5 brightens the clouds a little bit too much. They don't look natural. Here's some fireworks in a night sky. Uh, the M5 has uh, brighter fine details, but both projectors produce a nice image. And our final image here is the stars in the night sky. The M5 is brighter with more contrast. And let's zoom in on this one to compare the stars. Next, we're going to compare the LaserBeam Pro C200 to a quote-unquote full-size name brand BenQ projector that's rated at 2,000 lumens. You'll learn in some of my other reviews that the name brand 2,000 lumen projectors are actually many times brighter than the so-called 2,000 lumen budget projectors that sell on Amazon for under $150. Here's a quick brightness comparison between the sub $100 DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed rating of 1800 lumen and the name brand BenQ projector rated at 2000 lumen. From this picture, it's clear that the claims of cheap knockoffs are not always true. I think you'd agree the BenQ projector on the right is much more than 10% brighter than the budget projector on the left. 
The same holds true for the quality of your projector screen. Here's a quick comparison between a cheap $30 spandex projector screen made in China on the right and an $80 spandex projector screen made in the USA on the left. As you can see, it's worth spending a bit more for the higher quality image you'll get. With that being said, you will remember from the beginning of this video I showed you that I was projecting these images onto a white spandex projector screen. However, if you want to use your projector in a room that's not totally dark, or if you want to use it outside like in your backyard for an outdoor movie or take a camping or to a party or something, there are two things you may want to consider, a brighter projector and the darker silver spandex projector screen. Even though the silver screen looks quite a bit darker than the white screen, it'll actually give you a nice bright image with more contrast, which is especially useful when you can't get an environment that's completely dark, such as being outside with a full moon or if there's streetlights nearby. Now the other benefit of the darker silver spandex screen is that you won't have to wash it as often if you accidentally drop it on the ground because you won't notice dirt as much on the darker fabric. But keep in mind, if the spandex screen does get dirty, you can just throw it in the washer using cool water and then dry it for 10 to 15 minutes in the dryer and it's good as new. That's not as easy with some other types of projector screens. And finally, you'll remember when I showed you the rear projection ability of the white spandex projector screen, well, the silver screen has that same ability. Okay, let's continue with our BenQ comparison. Here you can see the size comparison between the 200 lumen Laser Beam Pro C200 projector with a resolution of 1366 by 768 and the full size name brand BenQ projector rated at 2000 lumen and a higher 1080p resolution. And here we can see the BenQ is noticeably brighter than the Laser Beam Pro. Here we're zoomed in to compare the resolution. We get good colors from each projector with the BenQ being brighter. And here's a chart of the lumen measurements of each color. Uh, this was done in a dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room like all our other slides were done in. And zooming in, we'll compare the pixels. Here we can see we get nice colors from both projectors with the BenQ being brighter. Same here, the laser beam not quite as bright. Here the higher resolution BenQ produces a sharper image. Zooming in, we can see that. And here's the colored smoke on a black background, and zooming in. And the highlight shadow chart, the BenQ is a little bit brighter and better overall. Here we are zoomed in. Here is a high contrast image, uh, BenQ is brighter. Here the BenQ produces a smoother and brighter image. Here we get much better shadow detail from the BenQ, but the Laser Beam Pro does a good job as well, as we can see. The Laser Beam Pro does a good job with the highlights and shadows. Here's the grid pattern. We'll zoom in on this one to see the difference, how much thinner the Laser Beam Pro lines are. Here's a different grid pattern, and we can zoom in on that one as well. BenQ has thicker, brighter lines. And here we'll see the BenQ reproduces the grid pattern more accurately. Here's the grid pattern in reverse with the white on black background. And we get similar results from that as well. Both projectors produce nice looking text with the BenQ being a little bit sharper. And for skin tones, pretty decent skin tones from both projectors. You can zoom in to see that. Here's another skin tone comparison. Decent results from both projectors. Here we'll do a simple color comparison. And zooming in, decent results from both projectors. Here's a similar image for comparison. And here the BenQ is brighter with a little bit more contrast. Here the colors are decent in both. Obviously the BenQ is brighter. We can see that and uh, a little bit more detail. Here's a good high contrast shot. And the brightness of the BenQ allows for uh, greater contrast. And zooming in. Laser Beam Pro holds up pretty well in the shadow details. 
Here we can see that. Here's a nice sunset scene for comparison. And a bridge at night. We'll zoom in on this to compare the detail. Here's a good night shot with the BenQ being noticeably brighter. And zooming in, we can see that. Both have good details, though. BenQ, of course, is brighter in this image. And zooming in, we can see it has a little bit better detail. Decent color and quality from both projectors. Good firework display. And our final image, the stars in the night sky. And we'll zoom in on that one. So my final advice is as follows. If you're always going to be using your projector in a totally dark room, then the brightness isn't as important as the resolution. It'd be better to get a dimmer projector with a higher resolution. So if your viewing environment isn't totally dark, such as a room with windows and you don't have blackout curtains during the day, or you're outside where there may be street lights or a glowing moon, then you'll want to go with a brighter projector. But remember that cheap projectors are almost never as bright as they claim to be. And as far as resolution goes, I would typically pick a less bright projector with a higher resolution over a brighter projector with a lower resolution. You can always try to make your room darker, but you'll never be able to increase the resolution of your projector. I personally would never get a projector with a resolution below 720p, which is a resolution of 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. The reason for this is that you'll most likely be enlarging the video to about 9 feet across, and at that size you can actually see the individual pixels on lower resolution projectors. I think a 1080p projector is about the highest resolution you'd need, as a 4K projector doesn't really add all that much to the picture quality for the much higher price you'd be paying. Here's a screenshot from a YouTube video that compares a 4K projector versus a 180p projector. It's being projected onto a wall, but even so, there's really not much difference between the quality. As far as sound goes, I would recommend an external speaker of some sort, as most projectors that I've come across under $500 do not have great sound quality. But I will say I was fairly impressed with the sound I got from the soda can size Nebula capsule. You'll also want to consider if you'd like a portable projector that can run on batteries, as opposed to a projector that has to be plugged into the wall. The portability of the smaller projectors is always nice, but keep in mind that the battery life is almost always under 2 hours, but it is not limited to running on the battery only. You can always plug it in for unlimited run time. As far as portable projectors go, I really like the AXA brand. The P300, P700, and M5 projectors have a fairly high resolution, nice colors, and good brightness. The Nebula capsule also produces a decent image with really good speaker, but it does have a lower resolution than the three AXA projectors. Alright everybody, thanks for your time. I hope you found this video informative, and if you think others would find it helpful, please click the thumbs up button, which makes it easier for them to find it. And also don't forget to click on the links for the Spandex projector screens below in the description, and check back for more projector comparison videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching.